Yeah, Reno's when I was shooting for, um, but at the end of the day, I, I, I've never entered before, and I don't even know how. So it's not <laughs> like I could, I could even come back earlier. So it's my when dad Cody wants you to come back. Yeah, I'll come back when my dad feels I'm ready. Welcome to the Luke Branquino Show. The next guest has been a guest, but this is more of an update on this guy. He's had some success the last few years, got injured, and he's on his way back to championship form. Stetson Wright, thanks for joining again. Thanks for having me. How is uh, how's the rehab coming on the hamstring reconstruction? It it's going really good. I mean, I'm I'm at that point to where I feel completely normal. I'm doing <laughs> stuff around the house that I. I, and I feel doing? no my, I'm letting pain be my guide and I've never I haven't felt pain so <laughs> that's good I know just talking to you after your surgeries like I was in a locked brace a locked hip brace and I just to move around was a real pain in the literally pain in the ass because that's where they reattached it <laughs> um, but you were a little bit different they just had you in a locked knee brace and said don't bend over at the waist yeah the same one when I had ACL surgery the exact same knee brace and they just told me not to straighten it and well for the first couple weeks stay in bed and then after that they said don't put no weight on it then i hit that six week mark and they told me to kick the crutches and the knee brace oh wow so no crutches or knee brace at six weeks yeah well i guess that's interesting but you did yours i mean in all reality you tore yours before the nfr about a month before right yep so you had a, a month of rehab, did it, and then had surgery. Like I did mine in June and had surgery in October. So mine had a quite a was retracted quite a way. So maybe that's why they were a little precautionary on my rehab. Or it could have been that I was also 20 years older than you. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how much better you heal at a young age. But the doctors were happy with surgery and everything. Yeah, I go in here in a couple of days. to. I think they're going to MRI it again and check it and make sure – I didn't do nothing dumb, which I don't. I don't think I did. But <laughs> well, you'd probably know if those anchors tore out. I'd imagine. Yeah, I guess you're probably right. <laughs> yeah. Now you said they did. Uh, they did stem cells, or they did P or PRP when they did the surgery, right? Yeah. Yeah. They took. They took bone, did they take bone marrow out of your hip? Is that what they did? Yeah, they took it out of my left hip and put it in my right. Uh, Hamstring. Hamstring. Well, that's nothing better to help you heal than yourself. And I know, you know, we've talked about stem cells and stuff like that, which I've been a big proponent of it and, and had a lot of it done in the past. And, uh, man, and I think you're a, like any other rodeo athlete, whatever's going to help you get better faster, we're going to try to take advantage of. Yeah. And that's, everybody was trying to tell me like, don't come back soon. Like, and I, I was like, well, I did the stem cells to make it stronger. So when I come back, when they tell me I can, I'm like, I, I'm not trying to come back earlier. I'm just trying to come back healthier. Yeah, well, exactly. And I think that's when now they probably do have a reason for telling you that because Cowboys typically will do things a little earlier than we should. But um, I mean, obviously with the team of doctors you have and, and knowing how much success you'll have further on in your future, I don't think you're going to try to push it any earlier. I mean, really, there's no reason to like you're you're maybe thinking planning on getting back for Reno. Yeah, Reno's when I was shooting for, um, but at the end of the day, I, I, I've never entered before, and I don't even know how. So it's not <laughs> like I could, I could even come back earlier. So it's my when dad Cody does, wants you to come back. Yeah, I'll come back when my dad feels I'm ready. <laughs> and the same with Kai, I imagine. Will you guys be coming back around the same time? I that's that's what me and Kai were talking about. We're thinking we'll come back around the same time, but. We we both talked that if we're not ready, then we'll we'll wait a little bit longer, but we'll see. Well, well and I mean, and I told I had this conversation with Kai. You know, if for some reason it you go a month further later, and and I'm not saying you guys couldn't make the NFR, right? But getting to the rodeos you need to get to, and and I guess without killing yourselves, beating yourself up, it would make more sense maybe to take the rest of the year off and. And I told Kai, I said, I know a guy that is recent, going to be the coach of a bull riding team that could probably pay him pretty good. And Kai's like, oh, yeah, mate, I've already thought about that. 
With obviously well, JB in the in the Oklahoma City. Uh, what do they call him now? I just seen it. Anyway, the PBR team. Yeah, and that's what I told Kai. I left for one day at his house and came back, and he and he told me this plan that he was just going to sit out this year the PRCA and go do the team deals. And, like, nothing was adding up in my head. I'm like, dude, you can make the NFR still. Like, you've, like why are you counting yourself out? And he goes, you reckon? I'm like, 100% you can still make the NFR. I'm like, you're fine. Howdy, everybody. This is Rodeo announcer Doug Mathis for the Sanderson Ford Cave Creek Pro Rodeo, March 21st through the 24th. You know what goes good with rodeo? Ford Truck Month, and Sanderson Ford has trucks. Get 1.9 financing for 72 months on new F-150 trucks. Save up to $15,000 off on new Lightning electric trucks and get 0% financing for 66 months on new Bronco Sports. Don't miss the Cave Creek Rodeo and don't miss Sanderson Ford Truck Month. This is Sanderson Ford Country. Well, yeah, and I mean, obviously, with as talented as the two you guys are, and I seen you, I seen a quote you made. If you're healthy and ready to go by Reno, there's no reason why you can't shatter every record that there was. Yeah, I mean, some of my best years have been on that back end of the summer run, and I've never done good from Reno to like almost the end of July. Like I've always kind of been banged up, and I mean, so is every other bull rider right. or any athlete. I'm not saying that. I get beat up more than anybody, but I, I was thinking if I was healthy going into Reno, there's no reason why I shouldn't just win so much more than I have. Right, right. Well, and I mean, banged up, granted, because you do two events that are pretty that take a toll on your body. So um, going into that summer run is understandable why you would be a little bit sore than maybe somebody that just does a single event. Yeah, I, I mean. I hope that I don't have to keep talking about being hurt. I want to be the healthy guy. <laughs> I hear you, man. Um, speaking of healthy guys, looks like Statler's pretty healthy. Yeah, it it's so awesome to see. Um, me and Ryder have talked about it before. I I think he was kind of coasting over the years, and once once you get humbled a few times of coming in top twenty in the world instead of top fifteen, it it makes you a little bit bitter. But I'm I'm glad he's taking the route of trying to get better and he hasn't rode this good ever and he just seems to keep getting better well i mean do you attribute that to just kind of a fire lit and underneath him now like hey i'm gonna have to step up my game and and go do my job if i want to be in the top 15 well th- that's exactly right and i mean that mentality of you're just gonna make it because you're right i mean you you sometimes do start believing it but then once once you're not winning like he was like he's a prime example that it doesn't matter what your last name is if you don't compete then you don't get paid and i'm i'm so glad that he just i'm so glad he figured out that that name doesn't do much other than hurt you sometimes right it doesn't get you those extra points that everybody thinks that it does get you right i mean if if i if i am getting the right points i'm Pat my dad on the back. I appreciate <laughs> yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah. The, every time you guys want to check, just go ahead and funnel a little bit of that cash over there <laughs> towards Cody. Does he do all the entering for for all of you guys, or just just you and them? Yeah, he enters all of us. And with me and Kai being hurt, and then Statler's been going by himself this year. So we're trying to figure out who's going with who this summer, and it's it's kind of a mess because if Kai waits a little longer than I do, then I need to figure out who I'm going with till he might come back and then well and especially if you guys are going to be going as hard as you you need to go to to get some money one i mean it's they'll be getting you'll be getting on well for your sake two two hopefully two head a day and that's one in the bronx and one in the bulls yeah and that's like me and Ryder have talked about going together again um i rode it with him clear till the middle of 21 and then i got in with kai but we we've talked about going with each other again and I, I think that'll be pretty sweet to go with him again he needs he might need to sharpen my mind back up <laughs> is it uh, th- is it harder to i guess enter with a bull rider and get on bronx or enter with a bronc rider and, and get on bulls see going like going with kai i felt that it was easier because whenever you stay on a bull you pretty much get paid right where in the bronc riding, if we were having to go to extreme bulls and rider was taking a day off, like it really is not that good because 
there's a lot of times that you can be 88 points and not win a check in the Broncrieden because it's gotten so stout. But, I mean, I feel like when you're riding good, which Ryder has been riding good, so wherever we will go, I think he'll win m- money. And uh, it's a tough thing. My, I, I feel bad for whoever has to go with me because of the limited – because me and Kai, I think, went to 60 or 70 rodeos last year. And it was – I mean, I I like it because I don't get beat up as much right. as going to 100 rodeos. You're going to have to try to get to 60 rodeos from June to end of September. Well, hopefully not. Hopefully you get to about 35. Now, the extreme money doesn't count. Or will you be able to get to enough rodeos if you go to the extreme bull ridings too? I – I think I could get to enough, honestly. And if I don't, whatever. I've right. there. Were my first three years in the PRCA, I hated all extreme Bronx and Bulls events. I I like rodeo, and that right. if I if I wanted to be part of bull riding only, I would go to the PBR. But <laughs> I I love rodeo. <laughs> Howdy, everybody. This is rodeo announcer Doug Mathis for the Sanderson Ford Cave Creek Pro Rodeo, March 21st through the 24th. You know what goes good with rodeo? Ford Truck Month, and Sanderson Ford has trucks. Get 1.9 financing for 72 months on new F-150 trucks. Save up to $15,000 off on new Lightning Electric trucks and get 0% financing for 66 months on new Bronco Sports. Don't miss the Cave Creek Rodeo and don't miss Sanderson Ford Truck Month. This is Sanderson Ford Country. Well, I think it uh, just goes to show you the type of cowboy mentality you have, which me as a time event guy really appreciates. You know, it's to me, rodeo is the sport of all events. And um, to hear you say that's that's pretty cool. But you also coming from the background and the family you come from, it's I could see where that where you get that from. So that's that's pretty sweet to to know that. What uh, what are things looking like now in the next month or two for you? I mean, obviously, rehab, strengthening your leg and. Um, probably trying to strengthen everything, not just the hamstring, though, your quads, yeah. calves, and everything. Yeah, I stepped out of the tractor the other day, and I, I, or I guess yesterday, and I, I really am weaker than I've ever been. <laughs> I stepped out and it hurt my groin, and I'm like, oh my gosh, the, the things that I've never even felt before just are weak. And, but in the next couple, I think in two or two and a half weeks, they're going to kind of give me the green light to really be getting after it. And the guy that trained me before the NFR to have me, well, I was physically fit, but I wasn't, my hamstring wasn't working for me, right. but he's, he's going to get me back into shape. And so I'm going to have about what three or three and a half months to be in tip top shape. And right. I think, I think it's going to be, I think I'm going to do better this year than I ever have. <laughs> well, and what a lot of people don't realize, which I know you'll be prepared for it, but like being in shape and I've had a, I had a guy come to steer wrestle. He'd never steer wrestled before, but he was a um, triathlon athlete. I mean, he was a football player, but like he did everything and what is probably in the best shape of any human that I've ever met. And then we started shoot dogging and he was running these steers and he hadn't run, but five or six. And we kind of went through the motions and he was puking on the fence because he was so exhausted because you know as well as anybody, there's a difference between being in great shape and being in rodeo shape. Yeah, that that's a that's the truth. Like a lot of people say, like, why run? Like it's only eight seconds. Like why get in that much shape? But there's nothing that wears you out more than getting on those eight seconds. It, it, literally, that, and it and I'm the few times that I did shoot dog or steer wrestle, <laughs> steer wrestle, which I only flipped one in my whole life, but I got wore out doing that. I mean, there's, there's so much to rodeo and all the events that people just think it's eight seconds or a three second you flipping a steer. I mean, right. but there's so much more that goes into it that people really don't understand. It, it's only eight seconds. How hard could it be? I'm like, well, strap on your boots and try it out. <laughs> exactly. I, I've always loved guys that, come on like i'm in great shape let's steer wrestle and we'll do it and i see it at every clinic you know and and you know we run them through the gauntlet for sure but it's no different than if i was going out there and practicing even when i was heavy and you know let's say not in great shape i could go do all those motions 
and still be fine where those guys that were in tip top shape would be heaving on the fence over there. So it is, it is humbling to, to those type of athletes. Yeah. And that me and Kai were talking about that the other day. He, cause well, clearly me and Kai ain't the strongest people anybody's ever seen. Like we're little, but wiry, we were talking you're about, wiry. <laughs> me and Kai were talking about being strong for like what we do. Like, like you were saying, even when you were big, them muscles that it took to throw a steer, they were trained up enough that you were yeah. you were good to fire. And that's what me and him were talking about. Like, of course, we're not going to pick up 300 pounds and throw it, whatever. But for what we do, we're we're in really good shape for it. Yeah, for, for sure. And you, and you have to be. And something that uh, I know I... I wasn't surprised because I know it, it would be an easy transition for you, but to see Stetson Wright's name under the commentary or col- uh, you know, color commentary at a rodeo, how was that for you, you getting in front of the camera and, and talking rodeo instead of actually getting to uh, compete? That, it was really stressful, honestly. I, I can do interviews after I ride, I think, because my adrenaline's going, but when I'm just standing there and having to talk, I'm, I'm really not that good at it. I stutter a lot, and the questions you have to ask, I'm, I've never I've never done that before, so I don't even know what I was doing. <laughs> well, it could, like for me, it was, especially when I had to do start doing interview questions, that was hard, because we're used to being asked a question and we can answer you know, and in the heat of the moment, the battle, you just got over and you got the adrenaline going. But when you sit there and have to ask the, or now you're asking the question and I try to go back to like, what would somebody ask me and how would be, how would be a good way for me to ask this question to that person? It is tough. It honestly is a little bit harder than people think. Yeah. And for me, if I'm ever going to do that again, I'm going to have to start paying attention to all the events better. (laughs) Like I, I know the top dogs in every event. Like i that's easy, but um, like that, I'm not too big on breakaway roping. And one of the nights they had that Danielle Lohman up there and Amy was like, what are you going to ask her? I'm like, I don't know. Like, what What? What? what do you ask? I'm like, why don't we bring a bull rider or a bronc rider up here? <laughs> Somebody I can talk to. Was that but, the night she set the arena record at Fort Worth? Probably? So she said it the night before and then came back up there. So I we did get to talk to her a little bit about I guess being awesome. <laughs> but the question was, did you know she said it the night before? I did because the breakaway is right before, right before, or right after the bronc riding. Yeah, it's right before. So we, we I, I did see it. <laughs> okay, well that makes it better then. Now, bareback riding. Did you get on many bareback riders? Bareback horses. I got on one last year during Fort Worth at Del Brisby's house. Oh, I seen that. Was that the only one you've ever been on? Yep, yeah, I, my. My well, my dad probably would have let me, but my mom put an end to it really quick. No, she said no. Yeah, she wouldn't let me. But I was trying to talk to Colin Pickett about letting me get on Nightcrawler <laughs> when I get healed up, and he said, "If you get on it tomorrow." This was during Fort Worth. I'm like, dude, I'm hurt. I'm on crutches. <laughs> oh my gosh. Howdy, everybody. This is rodeo announcer Doug Mathis for the Sanderson Ford Cave Creek Pro Rodeo, March 21st through the 24th. You know what goes good with rodeo? Ford Truck Month, and Sanderson Ford has trucks. Get 1.9 financing for 72 months on new F-150 trucks. Save up to $15,000 off on new Lightning electric trucks and get 0% financing for 66 months on new Bronco Sports. Don't miss the Cave Creek Rodeo and don't miss Sanderson Ford Truck Month. This is Sanderson Ford Country. Here on the Luke Branquino Show, we like to throw a little rodeo trivia around. What rodeo is often referred to as the oldest rodeo? To hear the answer, you're going to have to stay tuned, keep watching the show, because I will answer it a little bit later. That would be, uh, people pay, spend a lot of money to see that ticket. Hmm. <laughs> see, um, I'll ask him again. <laughs> there you go, yeah, yeah. Ask him again, we'll sell tickets. So it would be like a rodeo. We'll sell tickets to a rodeo. That would be interesting. What about the, the you know, missing out on things like the American? I know that's that's got to be a, a tough one since you won first in two events last year. And, um, you know, just these rodeos that are coming up, we, and I've talked a lot about the Kid Rock and Roll Rodeo, how cool of an event that's going to be. Um, but at least it's more opportunity for Cowboys. Yeah, well, all all of it kills me. Like I showed up there in Fort Worth, and I mean I've had really good luck at that rodeo. So I was, it kind of hurt to sit back and watch that, and then 
just watching all these rodeos. I'd never been to Tucson, and I went down there the other day with my with Ryder and Rusty, and that's dang for sure a rodeo I'm probably going to go to next year. But you've never been to Tucson? No, I've always been towards the end of Tucson, and I had to turn out because of the San Antonio semis. Uh, I got you. Yeah, but yeah. That makes sense because, yeah, they're over the top of each other. They used to, which was way before your time. Your dad would know this. But San San Angelo short round used to be the same weekend, too. You used to have San Antonio, San Angelo, and Tucson short rounds the same weekend. Yeah, San, Ange- San Angelo, I think 19 or 20 was the last year that they had San Angelo during during it. Oh, so you were in it? Yeah, I, I went two years there. And then they switched it to April or whatever it is now. Yeah, that that used to be a pretty good run. You knew you were having, you knew that you had a chance to have one hell of a winner when you were in all three short rounds. And then you're like, oh man, we got to drive ahead of us come Saturday night. Yeah, my dad always says, what a problem to have. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Gosh, I hate having to do this, but yeah, the same time, I hate I love winning. To do this. Yeah, well, shoot. Well, man, I, I appreciate you coming on. I know this was a short one, but uh, just wanted to get an update, see how things were uh, in the right world, and looking forward to, to your comeback. Heck yeah. Well, thanks for having me, Luke. You bet, man. We'll be talking to you. Rodeo trivia question. What rodeo is often referred to as the oldest rodeo? That rodeo would be the Prescott Frontier Days, which has started or did start in 1888, just a couple years before I was born. Hey, you want to see more in-depth details on the Luke Branquino Show? Make sure you like and subscribe.